Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and welcome. My name is Greg Bolt. My name is Heidi Bolt and we serve as co-pastors at First Presbyterian Church in Red Wing, Minnesota. Over the last several months, we have been asked for the safety of all to be physically distant from one another. In some ways, this physical distance has allowed us to become closer to one another in different ways. In other ways, it has been hard not to gather as church communities and share the joy of fellowship, hugs, and each other's presence. One thing that this pandemic has highlighted for us is the need for connection. And we are blessed to be a part of a connectional denomination in the Presbyterian Church USA. We at First Presbyterian Red Wing have partnered with Presbyterian Church of the Way in Shoreview and Calvin Presbyterian Church in Long Lake to highlight our connectional nature and to share in online worship together. What that means is for the next three weeks, we will share in online worship leadership. On July 5th, Presbyterian Church of the Way will be the primary worship leaders. July 12th will be led by First Presbyterian and July 19th will be led by Calvin Presbyterian. Your congregation may add pieces specific to your context but the majority of the worship will be led by one church. We hope that you enjoy the diverse and beautiful expressions of worship found throughout our denomination and our state. Remembering that God calls us into community, celebrating our diversity and lavishing in our unity in Christ. Let us proclaim the good news. Let us worship God together. Good morning, friends. My name is David Parker. I'm the pastor here at Presbyterian Church of the Way, one of the pastors here. Uh, thank you, Greg and Heidi, for that welcome. For all of you who are tuning in that are from the Calvin Church or First Presbyterian and Red Wing, we welcome you. For all of our PCOTW family and friends, we welcome you also this morning. As we gather together, however we are worshiping, wherever we are worshiping, I want to invite you now to take a moment, let us rise in body or spirit. Will you join me in our call to worship? Let us say this together. Jesus says, come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Dear friends, Christ is here offering us rest. We cast our, cast cares, our cares upon, upon God. God. Take Christ's love and wear it well, for this garment is easy and light. We cast our cares upon God. Come into this time of love where we worship a gentle God. We cast our cares upon God. Let us worship God. I invite you now to join us in singing our opening hymn, I've Got Peace Like a River. Let's sing together.
Friends, each time we come to God to worship God, it's appropriate for us at the beginning of our service to confess our sins before God and one another. So let us do so now using the prayer of confession printed in our bulletins and on the screen before you, followed by a time of silence. Let us pray together. Loving, Loving Savior, Savior, we, we confess, confess that we want, want to feel powerful, powerful and in control of our lives and destinies. We too often become entangled in our own schemes to earn your favor and prove our worthiness. Forgive our proud religious sophistication. Forgive us for judging others when they fail to measure up to our scrutiny. Give us humble hearts that we might embrace your mercy for ourselves and reflect it to others. Lamb of God, hear our prayers. Amen. Amen. Children of God, in humility and gentleness, Christ came to forgive you and renew your life. We have, we have been, been rescued, rescued from the power of sin by the Lord Jesus Christ. Let your hearts be content and your witness made bold as you walk in the freedom of God's grace. Friends, believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. And now at this time, I want to invite you, if you are standing wherever you're worshiping, I want to invite you to be seated. And we're going to have a special time of music by our PCOTW band, a project that they've been working on for quite a while.
Okay, so if your toes are not tapping at this point, rewind and start over again, right? My name is Sarah Parker, and I am the Director of Children and Family Ministries here at Presbyterian Church of the Way. And I wanna share a message with children of all ages this morning. So yesterday, as many of you know, was the 4th of July. And there are lots of different things that we do at this time of year to commemorate that. But one of the favorites in our household over the years has been blowing off things like this, um, a firecracker. And you'll be glad to know I'm not lighting this. This is not going to happen. Um, but one of the things that I always think of when I think of a firecracker is the fuse. This is really important, right? The shorter the fuse, the quicker you have to get away once you light it. And the longer the fuse, the longer you have to set it in the right place to make sure that um, it will go off the way that you hope that it does. But looking at a fuse like this reminds me of us as well. And oftentimes we have short fuses with one another too, right? Sometimes we get angry, we get frustrated, we get upset with one another, and we explode, right? Our fuse gets ignited and we explode. And sometimes that means that we hurt people around us. So I was thinking about a, a psalm that talks about how God is in terms of God's fuse with us. From Psalm 103, verse 8, it says, The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in love. And when I heard that, I was reminded of a story. There was a little boy who was struggling with his own anger. And every day he would have these big fits of anger where he would say things that hurt people in his family, where he would throw things. And he was just really having a hard time. So one day his dad handed him a hammer, <laughs> of all things, and a pile of nails, just simple nails like this one. And he told him to go out, and they had a fence, a wooden fence, by their house. And he said, every time you lose it, every time you explode, I want you to nail, hammer a nail into the fence. And at first, when the boy started, there were 30 nails every day that would go into the fence. And over time, he learned, because as he saw this, he, he thought, I don't want this to be the way it is. So he learned ways to start calming down. And over time, the number of nails that he put into the fence decreased until one day he was adding no new nails at all. And he came and he was so excited and he told his dad, and his dad said, okay, now, every time you can go a day without getting angry, I want you to take a nail out. So day by day, moment by moment, when he would have those times where he calmed down, instead of getting angry, he would take a nail out until all the nails were gone. And he went back and he told his dad and his dad took him by the hand and took him and showed him the fence. And he said, I'm proud of you. He's like, but remember, when we get angry with one another, when we say things in anger, when we explode and blow up on one another, this is what is left, the holes. And so when we remember that, we also remember God's ability to forgive us. We remember in our relationships that we are called to forgive one another, but we're also reminded that in every time, every season, the Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love. That's a pretty amazing promise. So as you think about blowing things up for the 4th of July, as you think about those times in your own family, when words are spoken, when tempers and fuses are short, remember this. Remember to treat one another with love, grace, and compassion. Would you pray with me? 
arms out, arms up, arms down. Dear God, we thank you for your slowness to anger and your gracious, compassionate love. Help us when we are angry not to hurt others. Help us to model ourselves after you, to be slow to anger and abundant in love. Thank you, God, for loving us. Help us to love one another. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's children said, Amen. Our scripture reading today is from Matthew 11, chapters 25 to 30. At that time, Jesus prayed this prayer. O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, thank you for hiding these things from those who think themselves wise and clever and for revealing them to the childlike. Yes, Father, it pleased you to do it this way. My Father has entrusted everything to me. No one truly knows the Son except the Father, and no one truly knows the Father except the Son and those whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Then Jesus said, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thanks, Lori, for that reading. Today we are tackling a subject that many of us long for and never seem to receive enough of. Uh, some of you, on the other hand, may think that the word we're going to talk about, rest, is a dirty little four-letter word and that it should never be used, especially in church. <laughs> Long ago there was a phrase, idle hands are the devil's tools or workshop. That phrase is said to be traced all the way back to Chaucer in the 13th century. It can be true that being idle can allow us to get into mischief. If you look at the crime rate in our community, petty thefts, vandalism, simple mayhem, all these actions seem to go up when spring comes and definitely when summer arrives and students are out of school. Fortunately, being idle and resting are actually two different things. Time Magazine noted back in the 1960s that expert testimony was given to a Senate subcommittee on time management. They predicted that advances in technology would radically change how many hours of work people would work in a week. They forecasted, now that back in the 60s again, they forecasted that the average American would be working 22 hours a week within 20 years. 22 hours a week within 20 years, so in the 1980s. The greatest challenge, these experts said, would be figuring out what to do with all the excess time we had. Now, over 40 years later, after all of these major advances we've seen in technology, I wonder how many of us are wondering what we're really doing with all this extra time we have on our hands. <laughs> Instead, I'm confident that most of us find ourselves wishing we had some extra time. Even in the time of this COVID-19 pandemic, as we have spent more time at home, and had fewer obligations on our social calendars, how much extra time have you really had? How, many, how have you used that time? Home improvement companies and landscape nurseries have seen a surge in sales in recent months. So maybe some of you have been a part of that trend. Others may have engaged in more entertainment binge-watching shows that you normally don't have time to watch, 
and still others may have spent considerable time helping their children navigate distance learning, distance music lessons, and life just in general lived at a distance. But how many of us use that extra time to really rest? The truth is we all need rest. We may not feel that we do, especially during a time when many of us are home all the time, but we do, our bodies, we need rest. And if our creator in the book of Genesis and the story of the beginnings could set aside and establish a pattern for one day in a week to rest, then surely we can find time to rest as well. So the question is, what does that rest look like? The reality is rest looks differently for different people, for each of us, especially at different times in our lives. For Sarah and I, 10 years ago, rest would have meant uh, a time of quiet from crying babies and children getting into things all the time and without the phone ringing off the hook. Even just a few years ago, the idea of getting a, a full night's sleep without being woken up to cries of fears from a child, from a bad dream, sometimes, sometimes it, it may feel like when you get rest, is actually determined by the needs of someone else. And we know that some of you are in this place in your lives right now, and we want you to know we see you <laughs> and we hear you. Others of you may be in a different season of life, in your golden years of retirement. Without the rhythm of a traditional nine to five job, you may find that rest has a different meaning to you. Rest for you may not be determined by someone else, but by being more mindful of what your body needs. If that means you need a 20 minute power nap every day, great, do it. If it means going to bed earlier at night, then do that. We even asked my mom what rest meant to her. And she said that at 77 years, clock watching is not important to her anymore. <laughs> And she enjoys not having to plan or do anything. If I were being completely honest, my idea of rest would include a giant pillow. A big fat pillow to lay my head on and fall asleep. Rest in peace and quiet. Ideally, maybe even on a hammock in the shade of a beautiful location. Now that's what I call heavenly rest. But unfortunately, these ideas of rest that we may have in our minds are not really the type of rest that Jesus is talking about here in this passage. As much as I wanted to find Jesus use the word, the holy word, hammock, in this passage, it just doesn't occur anywhere. Instead, in this call to rest, Jesus uses two words multiple times, which means we should pay attention to what these words are. And it gives us a better understanding of what kind of rest he's talking about. To begin, we see that twice he uses the word yoke. Now, as you may know, a yoke is an implement strapped on a pair of oxen to team them up to do good work. As odd as it may sound, Jesus seems to be calling us to rest and work at the same time. For us to be able to rest, we must take up his yoke and join him in the work. Now, for a little clarity, we should know that just doing busy work, even busy work for the church, isn't necessarily what Jesus had in mind. Too often we can move around from project to project, from church activity to church activity, and keep ourselves very busy. But when we take up Jesus' yoke, when we join Jesus in the work that he is doing, it's a whole different situation. Instead of focusing on what we want to do, our eyes and our lives are in lockstep 
with Christ. Our focus is on where Jesus is going, not where we want to go. And while the world around us seems to constantly clamor for our attention to be on ourselves, on self-promotion, self-preservation, entertainment, education, exploration, a myriad of other ways of life, we are called to remember the two commandments that Jesus uplifts in this same gospel. To love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. To love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. Love God and love your neighbors. We've heard this a hundred times, if not more. But it's such a revolutionary concept. So much so that if we follow Jesus in practicing these two main laws, everything else, as we are told, would fall into place. Our insatiable need for stockpiling things and money would turn into selfless giving and sacrificial living. If we truly join Jesus in this way of life, we would not be about self first. We would care about the needs of others. We would see and we would work toward the betterment of others. This is walking with the Lord and taking up his yoke. I remember a few years ago, I was driving through southern Iowa, not on purpose, probably trying to get somewhere else, and I was reminded of the simplicity and the ease of life as my gas-guzzling SUV blew by not one or two, but five different horse-drawn carriages driven by people in the Amish communities and in, in those neighborhoods. Oh, for a horse-drawn carriage when gas is over $2 a gallon. How easy it is, this simple life. And, and this is what Jesus was trying to remind us of. If we would just pay attention to the simplicity of his message, love God and love your neighbors. So many of our stresses would be put in place and correctly taken care of. But we want you to know that we are not naive enough to think that this is an easy task. It's simple, yes, but not easy. There's a reason Jesus used one more word twice in this call for rest. The other word in this text is burden. It's something that each of us has unique in our own lives. What may be a burden for someone may not be for another. Each of us has different burdens in our lives and they vary in sizes and shapes Things are like, well, how are we going to make ends meet financially? Or how are we going to resolve the problems in our marriage or overcome the grief of divorce? Or how are we going to stand strong against the sin that we're wrestling with? Or how do we let go of guilt that we have from something that we've maybe done or left undone in the past? How do we forgive someone, truly forgive them? For something that they have done wrong to us? How do we better handle and manage our time? What do we do when we're tired and stressed and worn out? What, what do we do if a child or a loved one has gone astray? Friends, I could go on and on listing burdens that we carry, but you know what your burden is because it's there all the time, nagging you, bringing you down, wearing you out, stressing you to the max. It doesn't have to be that way. Friends, Jesus says to bring those burdens to him. Take up his yoke. Walk alongside of him and he will share the load you are carrying. I don't know about you, but when I think about the burdens that I have experienced, it's much more tolerable knowing that there is someone I can share those burdens with. 
Several years ago, the Wall Street Journal carried a story about Sally, an overly conscientious young person who made herself miserable over the smallest failures and setbacks in her life. And early one fall, while the leaves were still on the trees, there was an exceptionally heavy snowstorm. Sally's grandfather took her for a drive and said, notice those elm trees. The branches are so badly broken that the trees may die. But just look at those pines and evergreens. They are completely undamaged by the storm. My child, there are two kinds of trees in this world, the foolish and the wise. The elm holds its branches rigid, and as it becomes weighted down, eventually its limbs break from the weight. But when an evergreen gets loaded down, it simply relaxes, lowers its branches, and lets its burdens slip away. Friends, today we want you to allow yourself to let those burdens slip away into the hands of the Savior. See the rest that comes from walking with Jesus, letting him bear the weight of our burdens. Friends, come and see the rest that is promised. May we be renewed. Amen? Amen. Friends, at this time, we want to invite you into a time of communion with us. As Reverend Sarah and our commission lay pastor, Mike Ireland, are preparing to serve our communion service and lead us in that, we want to make sure that you have your elements ready to go. So if you're watching this service, you can just pause right now and or you can listen to my voice while I do a couple announcements and get your elements ready to go. Uh, again, we thank the congregations of First Presbyterian Church Red Wing and Calvin Church in Long, uh, Long Lake for participating with us today. This is going to be a great opportunity for us to share in worship together. Uh, for those of you who are uh, normally with us with PCOTW, uh, we just want to remind you some of the things that we have been doing uh, will be kind of put on hold for just a little while. Our Bible studies are taking a break uh, for the month of July, and they'll be coming back in in August. Um, there will be a vacation Bible school, a very uh, short three-day vacation Bible school in the middle of the month, and uh, please pay attention to some announcements about that in the coming weeks as well, too, uh, through our Connections email newsletter. Uh, we are so thankful, uh, again, uh, for the partnership that we have with this Connectional Church. At this time, we want to invite you to come back together and let us prepare our hearts and our minds as we come to the table of the Lord. <laughs> Friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God said that they will come from east and west, from north and south. They will come from Red Wing and from Long Lake and from Shoreview and from all over the Twin Cities area to celebrate together the feast that the Lord has prepared. We're reminded that when Jesus was on the road with his disciples following his resurrection, as they were walking together, talking to, among themselves about the things that had happened to Jesus, that they didn't recognize him, and that it was only in that moment when they were gathered together around the table, when, they, when Jesus took bread and blessed it and gave it to them, that their eyes were opened and they recognized him. Friends, it's our prayer, our hope that every time we come to the table, that we might be reminded, whether it's in this place or in your homes, of who Jesus is and the great gift that this meal is for us. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Please, please be with me in a moment of prayer. God of hope, 
of love, of mercy. Through prayer, we give thanks and praise to you for the gift of your Son, whom you sent into a harsh, intolerant world so that we might believe in the good news. Now in the sacrament of communion, we are drawn close in remembrance of Christ, becoming spiritually nourished from the bounty upon this table, and to leave blessed with an affirmed awareness of your divine presence throughout our lives. Responding in gratitude to this blessing, we ask your presence to also surround all who suffer in the world. As channels of your love, call us to participate in doing your will, acting to help those in need and share your light of hope in a world that's dark and desperate need of healing. In a moment of shared silence, let us now lift up to your care, our family, our friends, those in your faith communities, and others who remain in our hearts and are in need of our prayers. Lord, hear these silent prayers. May those named in our silence feel Christ's presence beside them in moments of their need. Throughout human history, whether in Christianity or national history, in our family genealogy, or in the entirety of human earthly journeys, we acknowledge to you the generations who came before us, sacrificing of themselves, doing their best to discern your will, who formed, reformed, and transformed, but who also made mistakes, failed your call, who oppressed, harmed, and inflicted suffering, who sinned over and over again. It is part of your creation in an affirmation of your grace through acts of faith, hope, and love, sometimes good prevailed, and the good became great. We give you thanks and praise and owe a debt of gratitude to those good and faithful servants who have become the spiritual giants upon whose shoulders we now stand. Blessed in the sacrament of communion and remembrance of our Savior, we now join together, saying the prayer Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we are gathered at this table, we're reminded that over 2,000 years ago, that Jesus was gathered in an upper room with his disciples to celebrate the feast of the Passover. And after the ceremonial meal, Jesus took bread. He blessed it and he broke it. He said to them, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup and said, this cup is the new covenant, sealed in my blood, shed for you in the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you do so, remember me. When we eat the bread and drink the cup, we do so proclaiming the saving death of the risen Lord until he comes again. And as we serve uh, the bread, wherever you are at home, take whatever you're using for bread and partake when you see fit. But when we serve the cup whole, and together we will drink the cup of salvation.
salvation. The blood of Christ, the cup of 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 salvation. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, as you have met us in this place, as you have gathered us in your presence to share together this foretaste of the banquet that is to come, God, we give you thanks. We pray that as we have received, that we now might be sent out into the world to proclaim the good news of your love and salvation. God, we offer to you our lives as a living sacrifice that we in times of work, in times of rest, in times when we feel burdened, and at times when we feel light, that in all times and all, all circumstances, that we might rest in you. And all God's people say, Amen. 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 Thank you, Sarah and Mike. Friends, as an act of worship, we are called to give. To give not just of our lives, but to give of our resources, to give back to God what God has already given to us. If you are uh, members of Presbyterian Church of the Way or friends and you're familiar with what we usually say, there's many different opportunities and ways that you can give to the life and the work and the ministry of this church as we still continue uh, doing wonderful work even during this COVID time. Uh, we invite you to send checks in to the address um, 30, 3382 Lexington Avenue North, or you can go on to our website, pcotw.org, or you can simply text to give, a very simple way to do that if you are uh, on your mobile phones, very easy uh, to be able to get in and do that in a secure way as well. Uh, if you are members of FPC Red Wing or Calvin Church and you're watching along, we want to encourage you to support their ministries as well, too, because we could not do it without the financial support and the resources uh, that are given each and every week. Uh, this has been a difficult time for many churches, and we thank so many of you for your generosity and your times uh, that you're able to give to help the ministries of these churches. We are doing many wonderful things, I, not to mention, you know, feeding people who are desperately in need, helping get people resources uh, when they are down on hard times uh, and, and they have lost jobs because of the COVID situation. I know that uh, FPC Red Wing, you guys are doing great work in social justice and the Black Lives Matter movement, and we thank you for all of what you're doing down there in Red Wing. We want to encourage you to give generously as God has given generously to you. Now, friends, uh, we're going to join together with our band who's going to lead us in our closing song of worship today. Uh, you may not know this, but that's okay. You can have the uh, words right there on the screen before you and sing along when you're comfortable. I want to invite you, if you are worshiping at home or wherever you're worshiping, go ahead and stand, stretch your legs, and let us sing together. The song that we are going to sing now is called, Lord, I Need You. And it's our hope that this can be our sending out prayer today, that this can be a reminder of 
our need for rest, our need for God to take those burdens, to transform them, to transform us as we seek to follow God each and every day.
Friends, as we go from this place, I want to invite you to go, go with God. Go with the rest and the peace and the mercy and the easy burden and the light yoke that Jesus gives when you walk with him. Love God. Love others. It's that simple. Do that. Your burdens will be lifted and we will live. Friends, I invite you now to go in grace and peace and mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be and abide with us until we meet again. Amen? Let's sing amen together. <laughs>